What's good, y'all? It's your man, Sight, and thank you for tuning in today. I'm super excited because I just picked up this really dope vintage piece of gear, and I want to talk to you guys about it and explain to you why I picked it up, all right? So let's get to it. Let's get busy. All right, welcome back guys. Once again, my name is Sight and I make videos about creating dope beats using the MPC, as well as other tools for producers and content creators. So make sure you hit that like button if you like this video. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're really, really, really a real one, you'll go ahead and hit that bell notification while you at it. All right, so let's get down to talking about this piece that I just picked up. Now you guys who have been around the channel for a little while know my model, use what you have. And what I mean by that is I never wanted this channel to turn into some kind of like gear junkie channel where, you know, I'm, I'm helping you guys get gear lust. Yeah, I talk about the NPC live too a lot. I talk about the NPC series, but there are other peripherals and things that we're into. And I really don't cover those that much on this channel, but I'm going to start getting into it a little more because I do pick up other things. I did cover some monitors that I got before and I still am in my journey of kind of rebuilding my studio, but I'm not the type to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff. I always try to pick my pieces very cautiously and carefully. I try not to fall victim to the whole gear lust thing, you know, the gas gear acquisition syndrome. I think I got that right. So knowing how big of a problem gas is in our community, I try not to feed into it with this channel. You know, I want people to take the tools that they already have, make the most of them. So that's why I do a lot of deep dives on the NPC hardware, and I'm still gonna do those. But this is something that I picked up for a very specific reason. And that reason is I want the 90s back, man. No, I'm kidding. I am trying to get some vintage textures and I actually was shopping around for uh, different types of tape technologies. I was looking at reel to reels. I was looking at some Porta studios and things like that. And I was really patient about it. And I set some notifications on Facebook Marketplace for Porta studios and Tascam and things like that. And the other day this thing popped up. And what's so cool about it is it's the holy grail of Porta Studios. So why are people getting into these vintage tape based technologies like that? Well, tape actually has a particular sonic character, right? When you push the levels on it, you don't get like a crackling distortion that you get on digital, really ugly, kind of nasty sounding distortion. It's not harsh. It's really kind of smooth, subtle. It just does some weird, cool, funky stuff to the levels. And it's, it's almost like a compression. And it's something that a lot of people have grown to love. Obviously analog can get noisier, it add a little bit of hiss, a little bit of air on each track. And that's something with digital, with these clean NPCs and modern DAWs and modern production technology, you don't really get that character in it as much. There are plugins, you can kind of emulate it, but there's really no substitute for the real thing when it comes down to sound design and really tuning your sound, right? So I'm gonna tell you exactly why I got it. I got it because I'm getting into sound design. I'm really enjoying making drum kits. I'm really enjoying making loop packs and things like that. And I haven't released any yet. I've just been really in the lab, just kind of cooking up my own flavor. So basically what I'm going to be doing with this is creating a bunch of kits for myself and for y'all. I plan on sharing them. I've been making drum loops. I've been making, you know, just different kind of soul bass loops and things like that in my DAW. And I'm going to be basically busting them out into this thing. What I like about this is technically it's a DAWless setup, right? I can run my MPC right into it. I've got some cables coming right now. There's only a stereo pair coming out of my MPC, but I'll be running all six outputs into this. And then, um, and probably my pedal board, which I haven't introduced you guys to yet. I've been having a ton of fun with my guitar pedals and just kind of creating distortion and effects with that as well, um, different loop based effects. So I'll be showing you guys those pedals coming real soon in upcoming videos. So I kind of wanted to explain to you what my thought process is picking up something like this, which, you know, it's pretty much antiquated technology, but it's a very particular sonic character I'm going for. And I thought this would be a great way to not only get it for myself, but also provide it for some of you guys who might be interested in it. Porta Studios, which are kind of the smaller versions of this, this is kind of like the godfather of the Porta Studios. It's not very portable, so it's not a Porta Studio. But the Tascam Porta Studios are a very popular series. I actually used them back in like 96, 97, when I was first getting into music production, and they were really popular in Project Studios. How everyone has a DAW now, Basically back then, anybody who was actually tracking and recording was using a Porta Studio or some variation of it. Typically, Porta Studios would be four track tape recorders. And what they would do is they would take the tape, which cassette tapes have two stereo pairs on them, right? So you have side A, which would have a stereo pair, side B would have a stereo pair. And what that four track cassette recorder was doing 
is actually allowing you to record on the B side and the A side at the same time. And you can split the tracks up. So instead of it being left and right dedicated, when you played it back in this, you can have four analog and they would all be in the center if you wanted them. Four tracks, as you can imagine, is not a ton of tracks to work with, but at that time, it's all we had available and we made the most of it. It's funny because back then, all we wanted to do was upgrade and get some of the new digital stuff. And it's just crazy that now, you know, you fast forward 25 years later and we have all this digital stuff and we're just yearning for that sound from the analog stuff. But what's cool about it now is we can kind of blend it with the technology. And I'm gonna show you guys in future videos how I plan on blending it with modern technology, bringing this into a DAW, bringing it into a digital recorder. I'll show you the digital recorder I'm probably gonna use. Um, once I kind of track everything in tape wise, I'll bust it back out. And what's really cool about this is it came with a meter bridge, really cool way to like monitor things but it's got a ton of IO. You know, as you can see, it's a full blown mixer. It looks like it's got about 10 inputs and then it's got eight tape outputs that you can send out. It's got aux channels, which you can run, you know, auxiliary effects. I don't think I'm gonna get that fancy with it other than my pedal board, but man, the possibilities are endless with this. So as far as creating a vintage kind of like 90s, 80s, 90s sound, I think this is gonna work wonders. So what are the advantages of something like this? Like I said, it creates a very specific sound. It's not something I recommend everybody go out and buy. Everybody might not be into that sound, kind of like vintage, lo-fi, 90s type of sound. But if you're a sound designer and you really want a particular sound, like a loop pack, definitely want to look into something kind of tape-based if you're not happy with the uh, with the tape plugins that are out. You know, you got like RC20 and there's just a whole bunch of different emulators and I think they work pretty good. But I caught a crazy deal on this. What's crazy is when this popped up, I looked it up on Reverb and these things are going for like 800 to 1000. So I figured worst case scenario, if it doesn't give me the sound that I want, even though I'm pretty confident it will, I could always sell it on the used market and make a profit. Um, it would be kind of a pain because this thing is super heavy. It's gotta be at least 30, 35 pounds. Um, when I picked it up in the pawn shop, it was like working out. Felt like I was doing curls. Oh, 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 it's a deep burn. Oh, it's so deep. Ah, oh, I could barely lift my right arm. So it was a win-win situation, but when I saw the price, I was really blown away. They were actually selling this for $249, so I was excited to get down there. The pawn shop is about an hour and 20 minutes from my crib. I drove down there. I tried vlogging it, but the audio was pretty bad because I did it on my phone, so I'll show you like a little bit on the screen, but but I pulled up to the pawn shop and I pulled up about 10 minutes before they opened and I just waited for them at the doors because I knew this thing was super in demand and the pawn shop was closed all weekend. So I know people were gonna be waiting for it until Monday, which is when I went. So I had a feeling people were gonna get there early. I got there about 30 minutes early, jumped right in there as soon as they got in. Asked them where's the tape recorder. They showed me, I went and picked it up, brought it to the counter, asked if I could plug it in and test it. They let me test it out. Everything looked good. There was a little bit of a hum. Let me see if you can hear it. There's a little bit of a motor hum from the uh, the cassette deck. Um, I've been told it's kind of normal. It might be a little loud. So maybe this thing needs a little TLC. Overall, the knobs and everything were very stiff. Everything was where it needed to be. There's only a couple markings where it looked like somebody might have dropped something on it. Um, and this kind of side corner panel right here looks like somebody might have tried to take it off. But other than that, thing looks like it was in really good shape. So I knew I'd be able to do something with it. I knew I really couldn't lose at that price. And what's really crazy is as soon as they rang me up, a guy walked in five minutes later after I got there and uh, he was asking where the tape recorders were at. Then he looked at the counter and saw me testing it out. And uh, sorry, bro. Early bird gets the worm, homie. <laughs> so I got to reap those benefits. And like I was saying, when they rang me up, it actually rang up for $180 plus tax. So I got this thing for $192 all in. Bruh, super blessing. You know what they say, when God has something for you, it's just for you and you'll know. 
So needless to say, I was excited. I got it at a great deal and I knew the purposes I was gonna use it for. It wasn't just for selfish purposes. I really want guys who have these modern MPCs to have access to like some warmer, vintage, cool sounds and the results have been really fantastic. So I wanna share those results with you guys. So I wanna create sounds that have really cool tone and texture to share with you guys who have the modern MPCs and the vintage MPCs and dolls and things like that too. So got a whole expansion series I'm planning for this year. I'm gonna be dropping soon. So keep an eye out for that. But I just wanted to talk to you guys about this acquisition. I'll be doing more with it in the future, including comparing it to my Tascam Model 12, which is a modern digital Tascam recorder. It's another kind of like multi-talented piece of gear, right? So I'm gonna be kind of comparing and contrasting them. I'll be doing a full review on the Tascam Model 12 uh, very soon. It's way overdue. But, you know, I really wanted to get in there and kind of learn a workflow where I can really show you guys what I'm doing with it. And now that I kind of have that down and I have another option now that I can use DAWless and away from the DAW, it's going to be really cool this year diving into the sound design thing head first and really just creating some really dope packs for you guys. So shout out to you guys for tuning in. Let me know down below what questions you have about this type of gear, if there's anything I didn't cover or anything you want to see in future videos. So once again, thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, peace.